Hey everybody, this is Freddy Off and welcome to another Minecraft tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to build this iron golem farm that works in 1.14.3 pre-2. Now they've changed the the spawning mechanics of golems slightly from 1.14.3 pre-release 1. Uh, and I'll explain that a little bit in a second, but if you're not sure whether or not this golem farm will work in your version of Minecraft, check the description below because I'll have written in there the versions that this will work in, and this has been tested in. If your version isn't listed in the description below, then there's a very good chance that it won't work in your version of Minecraft. So check there first before you start sending comments and the like. So as I mentioned, they've changed, they've changed this slightly from 1.14.3 pre-release 1 in that in that version, in the last version, you only needed three scared villagers and a zombie. So three scared villagers and a zombie would spawn you a golem every 35 seconds. They've changed that now. So now you need six villagers and they need to be able to sleep or they, they need to have slept. They need a job. They need a profession. So you'll need a workstation. And they also can't be scared all of the time. There has to be a time during the day when they're not scared by the zombie down there uh, and to do that we've got a couple of sticky pistons we've got a sticky piston there and we've got a sticky piston just there and they're alternating and they're being fired by a daylight sensor and an observer because I love my observers I was quite pleased to get one of these in the build this it does mean that the this version is slightly more expensive than the last version but there's just no way around it and I'll explain why you need the observer in a second and you can't just stick a day daylight sensor on top of the uh, the pistons i'll explain that in a second but you've got a, a daylight sensor there the observer detects the change in state of the daylight sensor puts a pulse into that block there which uh, which fires the or puts a one tick pulse through the sticky piston uh, and because uh, you, in java the sticky piston will drop the block in uh, if it receives a one tick pulse then it, it fires the block out and leaves it there this is one of the reasons why this will not work in bedrock because in bedrock sticky pistons don't leave the blocks behind when they receive a one tick pulse so if you're trying to build this in bedrock sorry this won't work unless you can come up with a different way to fire those pistons but uh, <laughs> but if you want to if you want to build it the way this is built then it won't work in bedrock sorry well, that's one of the reasons it won't work in bedrock. OK, so the reason for having the, the pistons alternating is we want this side of villages. We want these three villages to be nice and calm. They can't see the zombie. The, the, the block is in the way. So they're nice and calm. They can they can chat uh, if it's between 2000 and 9000 ticks. They can do a bit of work. They can access their workstations without being scared by the zombie. As soon as they're being scared by the zombie, they can't do anything else other than run around yelling, we need a golem. OK, so these guys won't be shouting for a golem because they're calm, they're working. These guys will be yelling for a golem. So every 35 seconds, these guys will spawn a golem. Uh, and it's the same in this pod as well. These guys are nice and calm. These guys are, are yelling for a golem. Nice and calm, yelling for a golem. Now, there's a chance that a golem or that uh, that four golems will spawn in here at, uh, at every 30 second every 35 seconds but it's unlikely since i've been testing it and watching it it's more likely that you'll get between one and three golems uh, two two and three golems is probably the average sometimes you'll get one on a very very rare occasion you'll get all four spawning. They'll all, all four of them will spawn in, in the corners and then go to the middle. But as I say, it's very, very uncommon. More likely that you'll get a golem spawn in one corner, in another corner, and then in the middle on the other side. Um, so, And as I say, two, two or three uh, seems to be the most common, uh, the, the common uh, quantity of golems being spawned at any one particular time. Let me put these slabs back in again, otherwise we'll get a golem spawning on top of there these are bottom slabs which makes them non-spawnable to mobs but it also makes them non-spawnable to golems uh, if you were to to, uh, to have solid blocks on the top here the golems would spawn on the top it would break your farm also because this uses a daylight sensor this one can't be sp uh, built underground 
as it is. If you want to change this and use an etho hopper clock or, or my own silent hopper clock that's somewhere on the channel, then you can build this underground, but you won't be able to use the daylight sensor. And it needs to have a timer on it. You can't just build this underground because as I mentioned, these guys can't be scared all the time. And if they're not scared, they won't shout for a golem. If they're scared all the time, eventually they'll stop shouting for a golem. Now, the reason I've uh, got the, the zombie a little bit further down, he's on a he's on a, a, a block below these guys, is uh, it, it becomes evident when it gets dark. So if we make this dark... So now at 12,000 ticks, these guys will try to go to sleep. If he wasn't one block lower down with a half slab there, with a bottom slab there, these guys would just get into bed, all of them would just climb into bed and nothing would spawn overnight. Because while they're asleep, they're not scared, they're not yelling for golems, therefore no golems will spawn. Because that block there... Um, it will it will slow down in a second but that block there stops the uh, the uh, the zombie from being able to see these guys when they're standing up okay so when they're standing up they feel safe they think these guys they now feel safe they think they can go to sleep but as soon as they go to sleep as soon as they get into bed he can see them they can see him they get scared they jump out of bed but they have made it into bed okay so that fills the criteria of them needing to sleep. If they slept through the night completely, you wouldn't get a golem spawn. So this would only work during the day. Because we've got a slab there and a block above it, that means that they do sleep a little bit, but then they get scared, they jump out of bed, they start yelling for a golem, which means that this will spawn golems overnight. Now this will produce between one and four golems every 35 seconds. So let's say it'll produce six golems on average, six golems every minute. You'll get between two and five blocks of iron from a golem. Okay, so say let's let's assume that you'll get four bits of iron from a golem. You've got six golems every minute, four bits of iron per golem. So that's 24 pieces of iron every minute now i'm going to let you do the maths on that but 24 pieces of iron every minute is a a chest of iron give or take every three minutes okay uh, sorry a, a stack of iron every three minutes give or take which is not a bad return so anyway i'll put a list of everything you need on screen now so pause the video if you need to and then we'll crack on and build this thing. Okay, so I found an area that I want to build it in. I want to build it in the, the desert. The reason for that is I don't have to worry about lightning. Being in the desert, there's no rain, there's no lightning. So I don't have to, to lightning proof it to stop the, the guys being hit by lightning and being turned into witches. You can build this in any biome. It's not biome specific. So you can build it in any biome you want. But take into account that if you build it high up in a snowy biome, the, the blocks of water, the source blocks of water around the farm will probably freeze. So you'll either need to light them up or you'll need to put a, a roof over the top of it to stop them from uh, from freezing. OK, but for, for this tutorial, I'm going to be building it in a desert because then I don't have to worry about that. If I put my chunk borders on as well, you'll see that I've built it as near as damn it, bang in the middle of the chunk. It's not going to be exactly in the middle because obviously a, a chunk is an even number so the the center block can't be uh, the, a, a single block i think that's that's probably the the center of it there but i've picked one of the blocks and i'm going to call that the middle so now we've found the middle of it we need to stick down some hoppers so let's just pop these out so i know where the middle is still pop these out take out some hoppers decide which way is going to be the front of your farm although it's not it's not really that important. This is like a 360 farm, but I'm just going to assume for argument's sake that this side is the front. So we want to pop out a, a hole in the ground that's five by five. 
And then around the outside of this, we want to put down some chests. So you'll need to put down a double chest there, double chest there. And obviously, if you want to dig into the ground and build yourself an elaborate uh, sorting and storage area, then great, crack on and do that. But I'm not going to do that. This is just a basic uh, how to, to make a basic farm. So we're going to put chests around the bottom of the farm. So put chests around the bottom like that. And now you want to take out your hoppers and you'll need a hopper pointing into each one of those chests. So jump into the center and then look at the this uh, this uh, this chest here, crouch, put a chest, uh, a hopper running into that, hopper running into that, then spin round through 90 degrees, hopper in there, hopper into that one through 90 degrees, there and there, through 90 degrees, there and there. And then the one in the middle, have it pointing at the chest that's at the front. So if we say this is the front, we'll just have the hopper running into that. And that way, all of the, the hoppers are now pointing into a different chest. So they should fill up reasonably uniformly. Now we want to dig out another hole, another uh, area around the chests, and we're going to stick in some stairs just to make it easier to access the chests. So that you want to stand on your chest and you want to put a line of stairs running all the way around the outside. Like that. Now you want to grab your slabs and you want to put some slabs on top of your hoppers. This is really to stop bad guys spawning in there. You don't have to do that. Uh, but if you don't, you are going to get uh, zombies and creepers and all kinds of stuff spawning in there. And if your golem falls down and tries to whack a, a creeper that's in there, then... Uh, all hell could break loose in there, so put put some slabs down. Uh, in the past, I have used carpet on there, but I find that if you put carpet on there and your fire ticks are turned on, the, the lava sets fire to the carpet. Okay, so it's just easier putting down some slabs, and they're not hard to get now, so uh, put down some slabs there. So now you should have something that looks like that. Now you want to whip out your glass, and you want to do a, a wall around the outside of the farm that's two blocks high using glass. Now you don't have to use glass if you don't really want to see him, but if you don't, it's going to make these accessing these chests a little bit difficult. You can put uh, upside down stairs on there or, or stairs or whatever, uh, but it just makes it a little more difficult. And who doesn't like looking in on golems turning into iron, eh? I ask you, nobody, that's who. So put a wall around the outside of the, the killing area made out of glass like that. And then you want to jump up on top of that. And this is where we start building the, the tower that leads up to the, the platform. Now you want to stick in two layers of solid blocks. These don't have to be solid blocks. Again, these can be glass, but you're going to be putting lava on the inside of this. Uh, so if you don't mind seeing the lava, you can use glass. If you do, if you do mind seeing lava, then, then just use solid blocks. Now you need to take out some fence gates and you need to put some fence gates in there. If you put a fence gate there, there, and there, and then crouch, look at the side of it, there, there, and there, and then same again, there, there, and there, and then you can open them all. And now you want to grab your buckets of lava. We need four buckets of lava, and you need to put one in each corner. So one there, one there, one there, and one there. So now you should have something that looks like that. Now you need to take out your solid blocks again. You need to build a column up 16 blocks. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. This is going to be your first spawning floor. If you're, good, if you're building multiple spawning floors, this is going to be your first spawning floor. So you need to do that on all four corners. If you want to fill this with glass, then put solid blocks on each four of the corners and fill the middle with glass. If you just want this to be solid uh, solid blocks, then, then you can do that. It makes no difference. But you do need to make the, make the column itself 16 blocks high, okay? So I've got my corners in, and then if you just put some solid blocks over the top, like that, And that's where the golems are going to fall down. Now, you might be thinking, why don't you have just a two-block gap? Golems are two by two, so why don't you just have 
an area that is two by two for them to fall down. If you were, if you only had, or if there was only the possibility of one golem spawning in the farm, then you could get away with having a gap that is only two by two. That that big, but because there's a potential in this farm to have four golems spawning in here, if two golems meet in the center at the same time. They'll just keep banging against each other. They won't move and it's going to break your farm. Which is why we have a gap in there that is three wide. That way, even if all four golems converge on the center at the same time, they will all fall down the hole and there'll be no blockage. So now we're just going to fill in the fill in the center of this column here with either glass or solid block, depending on, uh, depending on your choice, really. So now you should have something that looks a little bit like that. Now we can work on the uh, on the spawning floor, but before we do, just stick some temporary blocks inside there. It can be any block you like. I'm gonna I'm gonna fill this with dirt so I know it's the uh, so I know it can be removed later. But you just don't want to be falling down there by mistake. So grab yourself a a dirt block, put that there, put a torch on the top of it. You don't want mobs spawning up here while you appear on your own, do you? Like that. So now you've got that, you need to grab yourself your solid block again, the block that you're going to be making the floor out of, and you need to, to pillar out eight blocks. Okay, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Uh, and this is where your water source block is going to go, because water travels for eight blocks. It'll come down here and it'll stop right on the edge, and you need to do that on all four sides. So two, three, four, five. Five, six, seven, eight. So now you've got that, you need to fill it all in. You need to, to fill all these in so it's a big square. And as you're doing this, spam down a few torches as well because these are all spawnable. They're all mod sp mob spawnable spaces. So if you're over here, doing this corner and it's dark, something will spawn over there. And be careful of the dark as well because of phantoms. So make sure you've slept as well within the last couple of days or so. So I'm just going to finish off filling the uh, the entire floor and then I'll be back in a minute. So now you should have something that looks like that. Now we need to put a, uh, a wall of slabs around the outside. Now we use slabs because for a couple of reasons really. A, they're cheaper to, to use uh, and B, you, uh, if you get a golem spawn right on the edge here, then it'll still get caught in the water and it'll get dragged to the middle. If you were to use a solid block around the edge, A, it would be spawnable for mobs, which is not good. And B, golems would be able to spawn on this block and then they it would break the farm because they wouldn't get taken into the middle. So uh, that's why we use, use slabs around the outside. So just put a wall all the way around the outside of your farm. So now you've got something that looks like that. Now you want to just go to each one of your corners and you want to put a solid block just there. And then you want to build up the corner with slabs. So you want to put a slab, two slabs there and then a slab on either side. This is going to hold some water in the corners. We'll do the same on this corner, do the same on all four corners. One, two slabs, two on either side. Solid block there. That solid block is going to be removed when we put the water in. Then two slabs and one on either side. Solid block. Two slabs, one on on either side. And we'll just stick a torch on top of there just for the time being. Just to stop, stop spawns. The more torches the better, really. So now you've got something that looks like that. Now you need to grab your slabs and we need to put some slabs uh, one block below these slabs here. Just uh, sorry, these blocks here. And that's just because we need we need a zombie to be stood. There. OK, and, and you won't be able to fly about. So the only way you're going to be able to do this is if you pop out these blocks here very carefully so you don't fall down. And then you put a slab just there. OK, so it's one block below the, the, the blocks that where the, the spawning floor, where the water is going to be. And then just crouch 
and walk your way backwards. Up to there, so it comes out one block proud of the uh, of the rest of the farm. Then you can put all of these blocks back in again. And you need to do that on each one of the four sides. Now we need to build the uh, the buildings on the side of the farm for the for the villagers and the zombie to stand in. So you need to find the center of the farm and you need to knock out 11 blocks. So that's the middle one and then five either side. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. And then we need to build a platform that is four blocks out and 11 blocks long. So one, two, three, four and 11 blocks long and then just fill it in. Now don't fill that one in because that's where your zombie is going to stand. So now you've done that, we need to put the beds down. We need to put the beds down first because we need to build the, uh, we need to build a block or we need to put a block on top of the beds. So you want to get to uh, how to describe this. You've got your hole where your, your zombie's going to go. So you need to miss a block. That's going to be a, a, a solid block, a wall. And then you want to put a bed here. So you want to get right to the right to the edge. You need, you'll need just stand on the end block. So you've got your hole there where the, the zombie goes. Block, this block, down at the end. And then you want to jump and put a bed down there. And you want to put three beds on this side like that. And then you want to do the same on this side. So you've got your hole, one, two across, two back to there, and then jump and put down your beds. And you need them this way round because you need the head of the bed here. When the villagers sleep, when they jump out of the bed, they're going to jump out. They're going to stand on this block here. So they'll be looking straight at where the, the zombie is. OK, so now you've done that, we need to build a wall on this side that is two blocks high. And we need to build a wall on the other side that's two blocks high. And now we need to put a wall along the back above the beds. We're going to have to move these in a second, some of these, when we start putting the, the pistons in. But for the time being, just stick down a wall like that. OK, so now you should have something that looks like that. So now you need to get to the middle uh, of the farm. Then you'll need to knock these three blocks out. I told you you have to take some out. It's only a couple. And then you want to put a daylight sensor. Look at the bottom of that block there. Put a daylight sensor there. And then you'll need to you'll need to crouch and then put a an observer block on that daylight sensor. Uh, if you if you don't crouch, you'll just flick it from day to night mode. So you'll need to crouch. And then put it so the the uh, detector part is at the bottom and the output part, the redstone part, is at the top like that. And then you you can put a solid block on top just there. Now you want to pop out those two blocks either side and put sticky pistons on there like that. And then on these blocks here, you need to put a slab and a slab there and then solid blocks up through the middle. And that way, when the zombie stood here, if there's a block just there, uh, he can see at night, he'll be able to see the villagers in the beds and they'll jump out of bed all panicky and then they won't be able to see him and think it's safe and then they'll get back into bed and they'll be able to see him again, which is, uh, as I mentioned, which is what keeps this farm working overnight. Now, we'll stick a couple of blocks in there. What we want ultimately is we want one of these blocks to be out and one of these blocks to be back. Uh, but we can't do that just yet because we need to get a zombie in there. OK, so for the time being, we'll just stick them there like that. OK, so now you should have something that looks like that. So now's as good a time as any to put a roof on this bad boy or a roof on this little part of it anyway. So uh, get yourself up on top. You might have to put down a temporary block or something just to get you up here and then just cover the entire roof without falling off. Cover it with bottom slabs. And this is going to stop things from spawning on the top. It's going to stop golems from spawning up here. And it's also going to stop your zombie in there from burning up during the day. So 
So now you should have something that looks like that. So now we just need to put a, a wall on the front of it and then we're going to try and get a zombie in here. Okay, so we need to put... Grab the right blocks for us. You need to put a wall like that. Okay, what we're going to do is we'll, entire, we'll get a zombie up here and then we'll get him to follow us in here. We'll run through and out the other side and we'll get him trapped in there. And we're going to do that using a carpet. So grab yourself a carpet and just put a carpet there. Now we can walk over the carpet. If we're in the hole, we can jump and get out over the carpet. But the zombie won't be able to. He's slightly too big. Okay, so he's going to follow us. Hopefully follow us in here. And then we're going to jump down here and jump out the other side. He's going to jump in the hole and then he's going to get stuck. And he's just going to stand there jumping up and down. And while he's in there jumping up and down, we'll just put a block behind him. And then he won't be able to get out. Now, there's really no easy way to get a zombie up here. You can try getting him in, getting him in a water elevator from down the bottom. There's going to be some zombies spawn around here overnight. Uh, you can try and get him up here in a, an item elevator. Or you can knock out a few of these torches. Maybe. And then go and stand over here and hope that one of them spawns over there. You might do. He might be 24 blocks away. Maybe. But one way or the other, you can try and get him up here. You, you could probably get him up here if you want to build some steps or, um, you know, build a, a, a zombie mob spawner just up there, a dark room spawner, and just drop them down onto the platform. There's set, loads of ways you could do it. Uh, I'm just not going to go through all of them now. What I am going to do is I'm going to turn it dark so that this bad boy doesn't burn up. And then I'm going to uh, spawn myself a zombie. Okay. If by any chance you can get him to pick something up and he can't, um, then, uh, then you're going to have to name tag him. Otherwise, he'll despawn. If he's wearing armor or he picks something up, then let's see if we can get one that picks something up. Oh, he's picking something up. I was going to whack him off the edge and then he's picked it up. So he's picked that up now. He doesn't need a name tag. He won't despawn. So if I turn my, if I put myself into, uh, into survival, hopefully get him to chase me through here. Got my carpet down. So if I go into survival, he's going to get a bit upset. Make sure you've slept. You don't want to. You don't want phantoms dropping down on you when this is happening. So we've got him in there now, like that. And now we need to put a uh, we need to put a slab behind him, and then we need to put another slab here. So let me just put myself back in creative so I can grab myself a slab. Now, in order to get a slab there and uh, and stop him from jumping out, just put a temporary block over the top of his head like that. He can't go anywhere. And then you can break that, put yourself down a slab and now break the block above him. And that's how you get your zombie in there. That's perfect, isn't it? So now you just need to do that another three times. So just rewind the... The vid, uh, just go back a couple of minutes to the to start when we started building this and just just watch it again and do exactly the same on each one of these four sides. And when we have finished, we'll have a little room for the villagers to go in. You should have a zombie in there and it should look like that. So once you've done that on all four sides, you're left with this. You've got your you've got your building, uh, you've got your uh, zombie in there, either carrying something, wearing armor or or being named. I think we've called ours Arthur. There's Arthur. Because he wouldn't pick anything up. Now we need to get our villagers up here. And the villagers are going to be a little bit easier to get up than the zombies are. Because villagers won't try and kill you. But before we start getting the villagers up here. We're going to have to block these bad boys in a little bit. So grab yourself a temporary block. Make sure it's different to these blocks. Because you're going to want to know which ones they are when you start breaking them. You don't want to break these blocks and let the guy, let the zombies out. So uh, grab yourself some dirt or something. You need to put a block of dirt there. Pop out that slab. Put a block of dirt there. And put a block of dirt there. Now, when we get the villagers in here, 
they're going to get in here, they're going to go to sleep, they're going to be all happy. They're not going to know that there's somebody there who wants to eat them. So we'll do the same here. Temporary block. And blocks around the side of them. Temporary block and a block around the side of him. And last but not least, temporary block and a block around the side of him. So now what we need to do is get two villagers up here. Really, we only need two. If we can get, get more up here, then we'll get more up here. I don't know how many are left down there. Maybe none. Maybe they've all been eaten. We'll soon find out. So to get them up here, we just need to pop a hole in the floor. It can be anywhere, but not around the edge. We don't want to put it around the edge because if we put water there, it's going to flow off over the side. It's going to make the hole too big. So if we come a, a couple of blocks in. Oh, bad guys down there and everything. I don't envy your jobs getting these up here. But uh, what you need to do now is uh, we need to put some water in there to make a, a water elevator. But before we do that, we need to drop down and put a hole in the bottom directly underneath this hole. And that way, when the water flows down, it's going to flow it straight into that hole and it's not going to flow all over the floor. So now we can stick a water source in there. It's going to flow down to the bottom into the hole. Everybody's going to be happy. A couple of villages. How did they get in there? Anyway, it looks like the, uh, the villages that were down here have gone. So let's just mop this little lot up. We'll just get rid of these guys. Right, so now what we need to do is we'll put a, a little wall around the side of this water elevator because we need to push the guys right into the, right into the water elevator so they can flow up. If we push them in and they're not banging in the middle and they're hanging out the side, then they'll get to the top and they'll get stuck here and they won't go anywhere. And you'll be left with a, a, a villager stuck right up here doing nothing. So if we do that and then put a little bit of a wall around the outside of it. And we can use this to sort of corral the villagers in uh, when we've got them in a boat. So now what we need to do is, is whiz off to a, a, a village or your breeder or wherever. Wherever you're going to get your villagers from. And we need to get a villager in a boat. So that's easier said than done. But if we've got a villager running about here, if you get your boat and put it next to him, he should jump into the boat. Like that. And then you can get in front and then you can whiz him around. And get him inside your, your little temporary structure here. And then when you break the boat, he's not going to be able to jump out and go anywhere. So then... Filling around him. Like that, he's not going to be able to go anywhere. Break the boat and then push him into the, the water. But as I say, push him right in. Get him all the way in. And then he's going to whiz up to the top. And eventually, he's going to jump out up there. But before he does that, he'll probably need his friend. So again, get his friend in a boat. Get him into here. And then push him into the water. This is easy, as I said, easier said than done. You might have to do this at night. And I'll explain that a little bit more later. But at night, they don't run about as much. There you go. Get him right in. So they're going to jump out at the top and then, then run off. Once you've got a couple up here, let's just say if you've got if you've got 20 down there, then get them up here. It's going to be much quicker than breeding them. But these guys can be bred while they're up here. So let's just assume for argument's sake we've only got these two because we have. We've got the beds here. We've got we've got beds all the way around. So if we feed these guys now uh, and get them reasonably close together, they'll be in the mood for love. Play a little Barry White music, maybe. Hello, mate. So I've thrown him a load of food and he's left it all over the floor. Come on. So now we've just got to let nature take its course 
and they should start breeding eventually when they get together. Come on, fellas. Making me look bad here. Has he just... Oh, I thought he jumped off the side then. Okay, so they've uh, they've got the beds, they've got the food, they've got the Barry White music. Let's start making babies. There you go. And the beauty of this is, obviously, when he grows up, they'll have another one in, in five minutes or so. He'll grow up inside 20 minutes, and then the second one will grow up inside 20 minutes, and then we'll have two pairs that can breed. And then we'll have four pairs that can breed, and then so on and so forth. And as soon as they've, uh, as soon as they've got enough villages to fill up all of these beds, they should stop breeding. If one of them's, if you know, there's a chance that they could both have babies at the same time. So you might be left with a couple of couple of villages you can't use, but they're easy enough to get rid of. So now all we need to do is sit about and wait until we've got 24 villagers. So by the power of television, we've managed to get 24 villagers in there. Don't you dare jump off the edge. What we need to do now is get them into the beds. We need to get them into these rooms. And the easiest way to do that is to wait for it to get dark. So if we turn the turn the day to night, they are going to all make their ways to a bed. Look at that, isn't that lovely of them? Okay, stop pushing, there's room for all of you. So now they've all got a bed. Fabulous. Look at that. Yeah, looking at each other like that's not going to get you into bed, is it? Right, so now they've all got a bed, we need to block them in. So grab yourself some solid blocks and then just fill in these doorways. Okay, so now we've done that, we've got them in the rooms, we've blocked them all in, we've waited for it to become daytime. We now need to put down the composters, but we don't want to just throw down the composters because there's a chance that one of these other guys will detect the composter first and, and then take the, uh, take the compost. And we need these guys to have the composters in the same room because, as I mentioned at the beginning, they need to access their, their workstations and they need to sleep. So there's no point in having that guy's workstation all the way over there because he's never going to be able to access it. So in order to do that, we need to block all of these guys in. So grab your temporary block again and fill all of them in apart from the the one over there the first one we're going to do so now we've done that if we put composters in here these guys should access the composters first okay so he's got one he's got one he's got one perfect so now each one of those has got a composter. And then we need to cover these up. Open these guys and do the same here. Composter. 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 Perfect. Actually, I don't think we probably don't need to block these up once they've got a profession. We're going to try that. Once they've got a profession, um, they shouldn't need, uh, they won't try and get another workstation. So if we open this one up now. Composter. I know, no you read all you like, mate. I'm trying to put you a workstation down. Yeah, <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 yeah. You're not making this very easy, are you? Composter. Brilliant. Perfect. We're almost there. Gone without a hitch.
Fabulous. So now they've all got a profession. They've all got a farm profession. They've all got their workstations inside the uh, uh, inside the area where they are. Now, as soon as we let the uh, the dog see the rabbit, so to speak, as soon as we let that zombie see these guys, we're going to start getting going to start getting golem spawning on here. So uh, before we do that, we need to uh, we need to do a bit of housekeeping. Really, we need to get. Uh, we need, what do we need to do? Firstly, we need to put some lighting. We need to put a lighting block just here. And that's because these blocks in here are spawnable. If we put a lighting block there, a jack-o'-lantern or a piece of glowstone or a sea lantern, it's going to mean that the block in the corner here, the furthest block away, has got a light level of eight, which is bright enough not to have mobs spawn there. So grab yourself a, 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 a jack-o'-lantern or something like that. And then we need to break out this middle block and replace it with a with a jack-o'-lantern. Do it on all four sides. Now we need to stick in the blocks that go on the faces of the sticky pistons. Now, as I mentioned, we want one out, we want one in, but we want the same one out on each four sides. So if we have the one on the right out now, we want the one on the right out over there and we want the one on the right out over here and we want the one on the right out over here now i've got the daylight cycle turned off you won't have it turned off which means these are going to constantly be firing so this is really not going to be very easy for you guys so uh let me put my daylight cycle back on again and we'll see if we can do this so if we want the one on the right in Brilliant. So now when the light changes and it comes out, we'll do the same with the one on the left. You've got to be quick. Especially first thing in the morning. Brilliant. So we've got the one on the right out. We've got one on the one on the, uh, the, the left in. Out and in. Out and in. Out and in. That's perfect. Now we need to break these temporary blocks that were underneath here. And as I say, as soon as you do that... We're going to start getting, going to start getting uh, golem spawn in the middle. So you can either put the water down now, uh, or you can, if you've got a decent pair of depth striders on, you can put the water down now. If you haven't, then we can do the water after we've removed the blocks. So because I'm in creative, uh, which means I can move about quite easily, I'm going to break these blocks first. So what you need to do is remember, don't break that block uh, without. Leave, don't break that block, sorry, first, because we'll need to break that block and replace it with a slab. OK. So. When that's popped out, we can pop out that block. Get ourselves a slab, put a slab just there like that. And then put that block back again. And when that block pops out, we can remove that. Remove that block, put a slab there, put that block back again, and we can then pop that block out like that. Now, those guys are going to go mental, and we've got a golem. So now what we need to do is just cover the front up. Uh, so we can either cover that with solid blocks if you want to, or if you've got some, uh, if, if you prefer, and I don't know how often you're going to be up here looking, but I'm going to cover it up with glass. Uh, but either's good, uh, solid block or glass. Okay, so now we need to go over and do that on all four sides. So find one that's got the block popped out. Put yourself a slab in there. You can replace that. And you can cover this side up with glass. Like that. Be careful when you do this. Because you don't want to let that zombie out. And you can break that block. Cover the front with glass or a solid block. Move on to the next one. And you'll find the, the blocks move in and out quicker First thing in the morning and last thing at night. If it's sort of midday-ish, they're going to stop moving about. And don't let that guy 
see the the uh, see the zombies. If he sees the zombie in there, he'll he'll hit him through the wall, and then you'll have to mess about getting them getting them again. So be very careful. Now, those guys can run about as mental as they like. We're not going to get another golem spawned up here because he's here. Uh, so we need to get these golems out of the farm as quickly as we can. And obviously we can do that using a water elevator. Uh, sorry, using a, a water chute. So now we need, to, uh, we need to put some water down. But don't just go spamming water down in the corners and everything. If we put a water source block there and there, it's going to completely flood this platform. And, and then there'll be tears and all kinds of things. So grab yourself your dirt block again and put a dirt block there and there. Okay. Do the same here and here. This is just going to stop you from accidentally putting a water source block where it shouldn't be. If you do, tears, all kinds of tears. Now you can get to the middle. You can pop these blocks in the middle out now. If you've got a decent pair of depth strider boots on, pop them out now. If you haven't and you're not happy about jumping around in the water, then leave the blocks in the middle. But remember, when that guy is in the middle, if you're trying to break these blocks and you whack him, he is going to go ape and you are most certainly going to die. So be careful. All right, now we need to put a water source block on the, the block in the corner, that one like that and then do the same on this one Ock, Will's man just there just there and then just there and then just fill the rest of these blocks in with water source blocks and be careful not to do what I just did there be careful not to accidentally click your water source block on the slab. You have to click it on the solid block at the bottom. If you click it on the slab, you're just going to waterlog that slab. That will happen. Okay, which is no good. Look at that. Now we need to go around and we need to remove the, the, the three blocks in the corners. Like that. And now you've got yourself a fully working Iron Golem farm that works in Minecraft 1.14.3 pre-release 2. Now, as I mentioned, make sure you check the description. If you're not sure if this will work in your version, check the description. Uh, if, uh, if it's not listed there, then there's a very good chance that it won't work. So thank you very much for watching everybody, I really really do appreciate it. If you have enjoyed the video, please don't forget to leave it a like. And if you've really loved it, don't forget to subscribe for future videos. And if you've got any questions about Gollum spawning, then drop me a comment in the comments below and I'll do my very best to answer it. So thanks again, this is Frilly Off, and I'm out of here.